Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints, Halifax, Nova Scotia, for morning prayer. I am Heather McAchran, a deacon here, and it is August the 12th already. Today we commemorate the consecration of Charles Inglis, first Bishop of Canada. And I read from For All the Saints. On this date in 1787, a priest named Charles Inglis was consecrated Bishop of Nova Scotia with jurisdiction over the Church of England in settlements as far west as the Niagara Peninsula. And in commemorating this event, we mark the official beginning of the Anglican Church of Canada. Inglis himself was born into a family of Scottish Episcopalian clergy who had moved to Ireland. Poverty and a lack of opportunity led him to emigrate to Pennsylvania, where he worked as a school teacher while studying for ordination. He was made a priest in 1758 and served as a missionary in Delaware before moving to the Trinity Church in New York City. With the approach of the American Revolution, Inglis became an ardent defender of the loyalty to the crown, so much so that after independence, the state of New York passed a bill which denied him amnesty and confiscated all his goods. Despite being forced into exile in England, he still loved America and planned to return and settle among the loyalists in Nova Scotia or New Brunswick. At this point, the English government finally decided that Anglicans in British North America should have their own bishop. And though Inglis was not the first choice of the authorities, he turned out to be the only available candidate. So in August, on August 12, 1787, he was consecrated Bishop at Lambeth Palace. His new charge was enormous, for it covered all of the maritime provinces, Quebec, and what is now Ontario. His advancing years and ill health made it difficult for him to travel, and he spent most of his time in Nova Scotia with occasional visitations to New Brunswick. Nevertheless, until his death in 1816, he proved to be an effective leader and administrator, sensitive to the unique conditions of the Church of England in Canada. We honor him for his patience in building our church and for his pastoral wisdom in sustaining it through its earliest years. This order of prayer this morning is from the Church of England prayer book. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who built it. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not disassemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which, we, which are requisite and necessary, as well as for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here with me today, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter have a godly, righteous, and sober life, 
to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And the Venete. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it. And his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye hear the voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and <coughs> pardon me, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear is my wrath, that they should not enter into rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From Psalm number 40. You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than to be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open air burnt offering and sin offering. You have required then. I said, here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O oh Lord, I have not hidden your sa saving help with my heart. I have not spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness in the great congregation. Do not, O oh Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land and I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture, on the mountains of Israel. I, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Here ends the lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom 
and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The word of the Lord. The Jubilati. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good news, good of his name. For the Lord is gracious. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endured from generation to generation. Here ends the lesson. And join with me now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness and make thy joys and people jo joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Eternal God, you laid your hand upon Charles Inglis and made him the first bishop of your Anglican flock in Canada. Grant to each and all of us the insight of faith, the eagerness of hope, and the skill of love that we may continue to build upon the one foundation of life, which is Jesus Christ, his Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is performed perf perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of thy enemies, that we may surely trust in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with, safe, with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we may fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone worketh great marvels, send down upon our bishops, especially Bishop Sandra, and clergy, 
especially remembering Dean Paul today, and all congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continued dew of thy blessings. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ, amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and as is promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant thy requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.